year-old female cheetah. Yeah. And this is the first time in about 45 years that we have had a cheetah. And her cubs out on display at an exhibit for all of you to see. Yeah. And cheetahs are typically a very solitary species. They really don't prefer to share their space or to live with too many other animals. And the females will isolate themselves just before they give birth. But we decided to bring Addison and her cubs out here on exhibit since she was a hand-raised cheetah. These are the African and greater flamingos. Now here, their flock consists of about 161 individuals. But out in the wild, sometimes their flocks can be as large as one million birds in one single habitat alone. Some of our great white pelicans with the rest of the group off to the far left-hand side along the shore. And the great white pelicans are one of the larger pelican species. They weigh anywhere between 30 and 35 pounds. Into the forest and habitats that they prefer to live in. Now, you notice the babies are smaller individuals. They're a lot lighter color. That's because they don't want to grow into that dominant color quite yet. They don't want to stand out as much among the other bird members. I guess they're still quite vulnerable at this stage. So I would say probably about half of the Patterson Zealand herd. I'm sure we'll catch up with them a little bit later on in our tour. That moves right along and you see some side giraffe who are up ahead. Let's see if we can spot all eight of the Maasai. Looks like we see two right up against the fence here and another two at the back feeder post. But right on the other side of this smaller fenced area. We see Eric, he is a young East African black rhino. The same species as Lembe, who a few of you might have saw in the beginning of the tour. She was the one hiding in the back corner. Well, this is one of her babies. He was born about four years ago. Now, you notice there is a crate in there in with Eric. And it's been in there for quite a few weeks. He is moving soon. And that's the crate that is going to be used to transport him. So we want to get him used to that crate. We want to make him feel comfortable and safe around it. So it's going to be in there for a few weeks longer until it is the big moving day for him. The reason why we're moving him is because there is potential for him to have a girlfriend in another facility. And of course, we want to look out for the well-being of our animals and make sure that they're going to be able to breed so we can keep their numbers up. So it's nose, or he might even start to kick her a little bit with his front leg. It's not that he's trying to hurt her, it's that he's probably trying to get a sample of her urine to see if she's ready to start a family. So oftentimes we see many antelope and even species doing this. It seems a little weird, but they take a sample of their urine and they have a Jacobson's organ at the roof of their mouth which can pretty much let them know if the female is ready or not. So that's probably what's going on there. Now some more Maasai giraffes you see out here on the left hand side. This guy is playing with a piece of a quiche leaf in his mouth. As you can see, as he plays with that food, his long tongue sticks out. His tongues are prehensile, meaning that they're specifically designed to be able to grab things. And for every foot of height that you see in a giraffe, it's about an inch of tongue, so it's really going to give them that extra leverage that they need to reach up high for some of their favorite foods. Now, luckily, they don't have too much competition with other species. They do have competition with other subspecies of giraffe, but they're going to be one of these few individuals who are tall enough. Because humans believe that that rhino horn possesses some sort of medicinal effect against certain illnesses. But that rhino horn is just made up of keratin, same stuff that's in our hair, that's in our fingernails. Another animal trying to hide out, a little bit easier to spot them. There's that three greater kudu hiding underneath the shade of the tree there with the rocks. Right. Pretty See, common hiding tree spot tree? for these kudu here and out in the wild. Oh. Luckily they have that tan color that allows them to blend in perfectly to the shade. Yeah. And we can't really see them there? from here, but they do have faint white stripes that go all down the body. And that really helps break up the bulk in their figure. Uh, the kudu have been known to be able to overcome and run through their obstacles, but they still are very shy and much prefer to maintain a low profile. They stand some pretty tough conditions and still be able to survive. They can go several days without having access to food or water. And they can be quite competitive when those resources become available. 
So you notice all of them have horns, and these are kind of a mixture of males and females. Now both of them have horns because that shows that they live in a habitat with a low abundance of Everything that we do, being a breeding facility, being a conservation organization, it isn't easy and it really is impossible to go the breed, right? So we are leading the fight to an extinction. And you guys are helping us do that every day. Having here today has helped us tremendously, but that's a little thing that you can do every day. Grab taking a shorter shower to conserve water, buying eco-friendly products, or even recycling all of these little things are really, really going to add a huge difference to the future of our, our social breeders. They need to live together or it would be pretty impossible. It is impossible for them to be able to get pregnant. And you can interact at the theater, as well as a few enjoying some snacks from the caravan tours out there. Now the caravan safari isn't an, adi an additional safari that you can choose to take. I don't know about you guys, but it was the closest thing that I've ever gotten to a real safari, so it's a pretty amazing experience. Get to be in the field with the animals and do a feeding with some of the giraffes as well yeah. as the rhinos. Yeah. If you guys wanted to find out more information about that, you could feel free to do so at the ticket booth, which is going to be right at the exit. And as we round this corner here, look out to the right, you can see a few more of those candid giraffes. There's help. They feel more confident. So as they learn, Behaviors of the father and the mother. If you want to spend some more time with them, just head up the path. It's about a five-minute walk. 